Okay, so I've now got to the stage where I've, I'd say I'm about halfway in time, terms of time. So I've been at this over an hour to get it to this point. I've slotted the um, power connector and the USB connector back through neatly and I've put the USB connector back into its, its uh, Velcro sleeve just so that's the job that's done. Now I've got to get the old broken cross beam to get all the four motors out and to put props, shafts and uh, gears and props on etc. Okay, so I've now got to obviously take all these parts off my broken bridge cross arm. I've got here the uh, the, the uh, tool to remove these top clips. So I'm just going to quickly do one. He says quickly, hoping it's not going to show across the room. Done this a few times now, and there it is. You've got to be a little bit careful, make sure nothing behind you is going to get damaged including yourself now it's all a little bit less stable now because of course there it goes the uh, the units wobbling so you've only got a single foot to work on so I'm gonna probably look to get something to brace the uh, the shafts here to do the other two three even but uh, that's part of the uh, the job done that's one thing so I've got myself a shaft a cog and my uh, blade now I've got plenty of spares and uh, what I'm going to do is just to consider, do a very good detailed check and I'm going to consider whether I'm going to rejuvenate um, all these parts. Uh, if there's any sign of warping or damage, um, I'm going to perhaps retire these for a little bit and put some new ones on in place. And uh, I'll do that bit by bit as I inspect each one. So they've taken these off before, but the uh, job for me that's the first time, and I can flick this over free, is I've got to remove the motor. So I've got again a ribbon connector here that connects to this circuit board. And I've got to actually remove this. There are some screws that hold this to the foot. So I can see three very small screws, black on black. And what I'm gonna do is to zoom in with this upturned in such a way that you can see what I'm gonna do in detail. Okay, one more step I'm just gonna quickly show you. So I've removed just one prop and uh, propeller from one of the arms. I'm shining a light on here, hoping it can help illuminate this a little bit better than I can get in the light. So you made the picture all very dark, so it's not worked at all, but there is a two written on the underside of the cross beam. Maybe the uh, turning the light off is going to help. I pointed it with a pen here. So there's a two there. And alongside that, I'm going to now quickly just bring in the propeller that I took off. And on the side right by the centre column in here, there's an A. Now it's going to be quite difficult to see that as well, but uh, when you go looking for it, you'll see it. So I'm going to write down against number two, an A. I'm going to do that for each of the fours. I take them off to make sure I've got the correct combination when I reassemble this. Okay, so I'm now going to remove one of the motors from the damaged crossbar. First thing I'm going to do is to remove the connector. I'm going to do this with my nails again. My advice really is don't cut your nails for a week. They are the best tools for doing little footy jobs like that. And just by using my two thumbs, coming at it from the front, I've now removed the connector, which you can just see reflecting the light there. So that's now separated out. So I'm now going to focus on actually removing the uh, motor and the board from this particular foot. Okay, so there are three screws. Again, I'm using the tool. Again, it's a little bit wobbly, so you really need to brace the unit as you're doing this. I'm going to try and come in at an angle so you can still sh see what I'm doing. But it's three screws. That's one. I always recommend a good board that uh, shows up any colours and, col and uh, small screws. I'm going to angle this a bit better because I did find that a little bit wobbly. Hopefully you can see this a little bit better as well. So it's not perhaps the best for me not being able to press on the table but I'm pretty comfortable using my own hand as a as a brace. You get a feel for how tight these are screwed in as well which is important for when you reattach this into your new unit. And that's the third one. Now that's all I can see so this should now be quite loose and should he says come free. And feel that the uh, circuit board's nice and free now that's good so now for the motor so on the top here you've now got three screws around the the main 
cog, which seeing again I'm going to unscrew, I'm pressing down on the foot this time a bit more, these are a little bit more solidly fixed in. And then it's slightly smaller, so the three other screw types, I'll just bring one into shot here, the two types. So on the right here, it's not quite in shot, there we go. So on the right here, this is from the circuit board, and the left here, this is from the motor. So you want to keep these separate piles. And I'm going to just do the last couple. Trying to not block the camera this time. It's all about finding a good angle that works for us both. Keeping the screws separate. Again, I can feel that noise with just other parts of the uh, quadcopter arm that I've got twisted over, falling over. As you can imagine, it's in a bit of a mess in three pieces. Okay, so I've now got the two piles of three screws, the two different types. I've got the circuit board rele released and removed. And I should now be able to remove, let's turn this over. I should be able to remove this motor now. I'm going to push the gear from the under, underneath of my small finger. And did that come out any easier? Yeah, I think it did. I think it's always the case, once you've done something twice, you've learned a little knack. And uh, it's, uh, it certainly becomes a lot easier for you uh, to do it a second time. So I've got a good collection of screws here and motors. I'm going to take the others off and uh, we'll look at then assembling this onto the new, newly rebuilt AR drone. So I've now removed all the motors and the circuit board for the motors from the broken part. My only advice will be at the very end to say that the first job is definitely to do the connector, then it's the screws for the motor, then it's the screws for the, the circuit board underneath, then push the motor down. So once you've got this really clear, the uh, circuit board and the motor come out together, a little bit of angle twist to get it out in the gap of the feet, and it's uh, pretty straightforward. Okay, Parrot are pretty good at labelling things and uh, the propellers and the actual cross strut etc is labelled but you can't now see the numbering so um, what I've done is kept track of what went where and my really amazing diagram here, this is the uh, AR drone facing forwards is just I've numbered so I know that this is number one number one needs a C blade this is the actual motor that I took from the my faulty units crossbar and uh, I'm going to be replacing exactly place for place the motor with the uh, blade or a new blade of the correct type so this is 1NC this is arm 2 and needs a, an A blade this is arm 3 and needs a C blade this is 4 and also needs an A blade and I've paired the motors up so a little simple diagram for yourself will be very useful and uh, now I'm going to just install the uh, the first motor into here Okay, so this is the last one. I'm going to just show you what I uh, do on each one now. I actually quickly pop the cable this side of the foot, give the cable a good little tug to make sure I've got all the uh, spare wire slack that's in the arm, and that's uh, useful for when you hook it back to uh, locate the uh, connector into the motor circuit board. And then I go ahead and install the motor circuit board. Now the motor really does need to be lined up with its socket to line up then further out, further down. To do this you really need to get this circuit board as close to the final position for it as possible because it actually uh, will actually resist allowing the motor to position where it needs to to go. A little bit twisting you would see the holes line up. You then want to get one of the small flat ended screws so they are different types, you can feel the uh, types are different and you want to just, just uh, get that going once you've got one in it's a lot easier because you're not holding everything in place at the same time so you want to just screw all three of those in and then turn your attention to the motherboard the circuit board sorry of the motor using then the different type of screw so now of course I'm using a pointed head screw I'm going to pop one of the rear ones on first, making sure first that my cable 
for the motor circuit connection is in between the two posts. He says, open the screw, let's just do that again. I might as well show you all of this. There we go. Make sure you've got a, a good straight alignment. You don't want to be biting into the plastic too much. Your memory of how tight and un when you untighten these uh, when you're removing from the old unit is uh, is one of the best ways to know how tight you need to re-secure. The end motherboard, I keep saying motherboard, the end connection here on the circuit board for the motor is actually quite in line with the foot. So it's a little bit difficult, I'm going to just rest the screw there, to get a, a very neat initial alignment. However, if you undo this double-ended tool from Parrot, you're suddenly then able to. So what I'm going to quickly do now is start the uh, threading process and then finish off by putting this back into the handle so I can get more prize on the actual screw itself. Now I've managed to let go here so that wasn't very clever. Let's try that again. What I'm probably going to do myself is magnetize this screw driver by resting a bar magnet on it for some weeks before I uh, put it away so that next time um, it's a lot easier. So as you can see I'm actually able to get a, a really straight alignment here so I can make sure I'm putting that screw in absolutely in line with the uh, the lug of the peg here but the finishing turns because I can't quite grip with just my fingers around the uh, metal shaft I'm going to pop it back in its handle tighten it all back up again and although I'm now slightly angled I'm going to I'm sure be able to get enough bite just try and get that in to tighten this and there we are so finish that off and uh, with regards to the screws I'm now going to just do the, the connector now this is quite fiddly as well so you want to look into the socket to make sure you've got the right orientation again it's uh, impossible to put it in the wrong way around so if you feel resistance you've probably got it upside down you really need to force this connector over. You've given yourself enough cable, and I think pulling the cable along the shaft is the best tip I can give you. And then it just slides in. You don't actually get a click on this one like some of the other connectors, but it does feel quite snug. So hopefully you can see that, and that's now in. And I've now done all four of the motors, and I've got to just finish off the, the last few screws on that one, and uh, we're nearly done.